Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Well, regular viewers will know I have started doing a little sort of mini series revisiting the Golden Hands series of crafting magazines and needle craft magazines, which was published back in the 70s. I'm very lucky um, and I have the whole collection. I believe it was 75 episodes, episodes, issues. I was very lucky. I was given them by a friend whose mum was having to get rid of a lot of stuff. And um, I said I would give them a good home. So <laughs> I think that helped her to let them go because I would have struggled to let them go as well. My idea is to gradually work my way through and pick a project, maybe more than one sometimes, each month to have a go at and perhaps put a modern spin on see how I get on the first one back in January I asked people to choose which thing they fancied and the one that got the most of votes was canvas work buttons now I didn't get on too well this is my canvas work button I was very happy with how it looked but I couldn't manage to get it to to work in the button making kit that I'd got in the little um, metal pieces that I, that I got so I did this one so this you can see the metal piece there you can see it's sort of shining through the fabric as well here so I've got to come up with a way to get rid of that and I was quite pleased with this one I just did it on an even weave fabric and just kind of freehand embroidered it and I thought that was really cute how that turned out the great thing was that it sort of inspired a little flurry of other people putting their own spin on the idea the things that Christine did so this is creating craft with Christine she ended up going absolutely nuts and I just loved what she did with the idea of covering buttons so she um rather than go and sort of specially get hold of a little a little kit like this she covered existing buttons and she covered them with vintage linens and things like embroidered uh, napkins and stuff like that. absolutely incredible I would try and remember to link to her video about that I was so impressed with what she did so and again that in turn has inspired me to do more of that kind of thing so I've got loads of little scraps of vintage embroidery and stuff what a lovely way to use them or to just you know take a little scrap of fabric yourself and just do some threading thread painting into it which is another thing Christine's very good at I saw that Susie Q also made an amazing button she was using it to as the closure for her colour inspiration journal that looks absolutely beautiful as well and uh, there's lots of other buttons I want to have a go at so the, this whole thing I didn't actually get on too well with making the canvas work buttons but what it's does what it's done is inspire a whole load of um, other ideas that I want to to explore so for this month I decided there are a few options I kind of thought about doing this I quite liked the look of these crochet circles um, quite like the look of that they're doing it as a belt and I thought it would be quite fun um, again as journal closures or, or something but I've decided that might be a bit boring viewing so I'm not going to do that I find crochet videos they're very difficult to film and they always tend to be really long <laughs> so yeah so I was a bit reluctant to do that yeah I just decided that wouldn't make a particularly scintillating viewing so <laughs> I'm not sure this one either but I'm really really keen so what I've decided I really really want to do is have a go at this um, embroidery on net and they run a whole lot they have a specific expert in there um, where did they put them somewhere they've got a picture of all the experts and there's one here here it is and Mary Pilcher teaches needlework all over Britain and she is their specialist for embroidery on net so um, they will what they will tend to do is introduce a subject and then in subsequent issues um, they elaborate on it and it gets more and more complicated so this is I think the second time they featured it and I do love the look of it and I do remember seeing kind of these sort of neck curtains with embroidery at the bottom a very 70s thing what they say here is that young girls if they say young girls in Portugal I'm sure they say somewhere young girls in Portugal that might be in the previous issue where they first start talking about it they do this kind of fillet work where they create this net and then what they're doing here is filling the resulting net with lots of different kinds of embroidery stitches I'm going to find the other the previous one hang on there we go so this is the previous one <laughs> there's hardly a home without at least one neck curtain that couldn't be enriched with a little embroidery can you imagine embroidering neck curtains these days um, but I can remember these kinds of curtains that like a kind of not not like net curtains like you see now but it's a a wider mesh of net I do remember seeing those and I just think it might be quite a fun little addition to some slow stitch projects to kind of overlay this with with um, different textures of fabrics underneath I just think it could be a really fun thing to play with and again 
could lead to all kinds of uh, take me down all sorts of rabbit holes. <laughs> yeah, so some Mediterranean countries, girls, young girls still make their fillet lace, knotting the net the way the fishermen make nets in any harbour. If you go on holiday in Sardinia, look in the fishing villages. They still produce some of the finest work. <laughs> but then they say that now that nylon and terrelene square nettings are so widespread, we suggest you take the shortcut and, in, and uh, start embroidering patterns straight onto a shop bought net. Well, I had a really good look around, and you cannot get, you cannot buy net like this anymore. That brings me to the subject of today's video, which is I decided to have a go at making it myself. I looked at a couple of tutorials and they said you need these tools and they weren't sure if you were able to get them anymore. So I went on eBay and I found this vintage set which looks like it's never been open. You can see there that it says it was £5.23, reduced to £3.70 <laughs> as it went out of style I guess. I think I ended up paying on eBay about five or six quid for it. Um, and this has got different thicknesses of, I've forgotten what these things are called, these stick things, these different size sticks are for controlling the size of the holes that you make, I believe. So um, <laughs> this was made in Germany. Oh, it's definitely not been opened because I'm going to have to cut it to open it. Yeah, this was made in Germany. It's got German, French and uh, English on the back. I don't think there are any instructions, so I'm going to have to watch a couple of tutorials and have a go. So yeah, one of the, quite a young girl I watched on YouTube doing it, her granny had showed her how to do it, and she was using her granny's, I believe they call these shuttles, and sticks. So there isn't, there's nothing here that even tells me what these things are called. This tells you that you can get um, suggested patterns and things from Berda, Aurella, Messrs Lang and C. I'm making this a bit difficult for myself, but I thought you might enjoy um, seeing at least part of my journey. So this seems to be just a huge needle with kind of a flattened end, a big eye. These are two different sizes of needles, definitely a different length. I think, no, they are about the same thickness, just different lengths. With, with these huge kind of eyes either end. This one looks like a little kind of shuttle. It always reminds me of my tatting shuttle in a way. A hole there, I suppose you put the thread through when you're winding your shuttle on. And then there are these three different sizes of sticks to get, I'm assuming, the different gauges of net tapered nicely at one end. So I suppose they will run through quite nice and smoothly. And, and they do use them to make these pretty kind of doilies table covers and things so on the back here it says the nice old netting technique is coming into fashion again <laughs> i think that was a while back it allows beautiful patterns for tablecloths stoles runners nets also for shopping cover for beds and prams as well as hammocks in addition decorative motifs for hanging up mobiles and window curtains so these days we'd have like a, a website to go to for ideas but um Obviously, they wouldn't have had that. So yeah, I've got absolutely no, this is just the tools. I've got absolutely no help here at all. Um, I'm hoping I can make some net with something like this because I've got quite a lot of this kind of stuff. So I'm now going to stop filming, go away and have a, have a little play, have a look at some YouTube techniques and see if I can work out how to make this filet, hopefully not too expensively. And then hopefully try some of these embroidery techniques. So, wish me luck, I'm going in. I'll come back and show you <laughs> once I've worked it out. Right, I'm back. As you can see, I have made some progress. Bring it down a little bit. I found a really good tutorial. There were lots of tutorials about this. They weren't all very easy to follow. The easiest one I found to follow was by Sally. D oh, I'm going to link her video anyway because it was brilliant. She was actually showing how to use this technique to make full-size net for fishing. She was part of a medieval history project in Denmark, I believe it was. Um, and it just made it really, uh, the way she explained it was really clear. And because she was making it kind of full size, it was easier to see what she was doing. So um, I've been trying out these various tools and things. <laughs> I think I've got the method. I need to practice more to get it more uniform so that I can then embroider on it now um i've also found a video that i'll link to it's only a short little it's about two and a half minutes of a lady in or maybe it's sardinia where they traditionally do this it's just kind of a montage of, of what she's doing from knotting the net in the first place 
through to she's got it on, on an embroidery frame sort of tied onto an embroidery frame to keep it taut and then she's embroidering into it and just watching her for two and a half minutes has really made me want to make this work so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit now I've got to this point because of same as with knitting and crochet isn't it always the beginning part is the hardest so I'm going to show you how I'm making the a normal straightforward row once you've got started on this then I've wound some fatter wool in this rainbow colour that I think it'll be easier for you to see to show you how I started I'm hoping that'll work and I've done that on one of the other the little shuttle thing that came in the in the kit I'm not sure yet because I've got two different so I've got two different size metal shuttles here which oh no that's that's a needle that's like a needle with a flat end which I used for so far all I've used it for is threading through the um, this this thread that runs along the top here. But it was handy for that. I've only so far used this large gauge stick because I, I thought let's keep it let's keep it um easy to see while I'm learning. And then there's this other smaller shuttle. Now they seem to be the same kind of gauge, the same thickness of the shaft of the shuttle. Um, but it's just a smaller thing so I guess when I start again in a minute I will use this smaller one because it will just be easier to manage my plan now is to just I'll just show you a row of, of this as it is then I will show you how I set it up using this larger wool and then off camera I'm going to take the smallest size needle and the smallest size stick and try and make myself a length of uniform net to actually broider onto because um, I really now I've seen that lady I just really want to try it so I've come to the end of the row of this row now and I'm just going to turn the whole thing so I can work left to right again and just keep turning back and forth I've got the whole thing now just tensioned by a clip on my cutting board which seems to be giving me enough um, and now because I've got this loop through the top here I can just pull on it slightly like this and watching the lady working just now she had a huge length of it she was working on she just had it tied to a post or so I can't remember now <laughs> and uh, and was just working away sitting outside in the garden in the sunshine I can imagine doing this myself in the summer the other thing you can do is have a safety pin on a pillow and put it on your lap you can work that way um, but for purposes of filming it I decided this was the best option so this is my my stick my my gauge stick which governs the size of the squares that you're going to make um, and I will show you how you get to this point in a minute so I'm going to put the gauge stick underneath I haven't quite decided on the most comfortable way to hold everything yet and also I'm trying to hold things now so that you can see for the camera so I'm going to put my I'm going to pass my thread underneath the gauge stick and underneath the next loop that I want to go into and come up through it like that pull it right through and then I'm just going to pull on it like this till, till it kind of butts up against that stick can you see that hopefully I'm going to be able to zoom into this and show you and then one um, tip that Sally gives is just to hope just pinch that little loop there with your thumbnail to hold it in place it helps you to keep the squares even so I need to practice doing that because I really need even squares for my embroidery technique to work so to do that you have to kind of pull and then just just coax that to come just slightly over the stick I got into a bit of a rhythm with it just now and it did get easier so it's just a question of practice so you get it to just sit on the just over the top of the stick like that pinch it with your thumbnail to hold it and then what I want to do now and this is where it will be easier if I use a smaller shuttle next time so now what I want to do is pass my shuttle underneath those two there and I'm going to do this slowly so that you can see now that as you pass them underneath that has created you don't, would, don't normally have to do all this I'm just doing this so you can clearly see what I've done it creates this loop as you pass pass it underneath those two so those are the two sides of the loop you're now working into from the previous row and now you want the thread to go back underneath this loop so because you've got a double ended shuttle you can just pass it straight back through and once you get used to it I think that's just going to be one smooth easy movement and then you just carefully pull that knot up and because you've got it pinched there 
it should not in exactly the right place and I just let go at the last minute I'm going to have to take that knot out and start again because I'm going to have a giant knot there otherwise I think it's because I was trying to slow down and do it um, so you could see clearly my uh, my thumbnail just gave out at the last minute there but it's okay you could just gently before you pull it too tight just gently take if you go wrong like that just take the knot apart I believe me I have gone wrong a few times so one thing I can show you is how to undo mistakes <laughs> and I'm just carefully following the path of my thread back through and I'll start that one again and show you hopefully a bit more smoothly okay so put my stick in place the thread is, is lying over the top of the stick it's going underneath the stick underneath the loop I now want to work into coming up through and just pulling that up to, to kind of tension it and get that gauge right and make sure that try and make sure that my squares are even because I was uneven on the road before they're not coming out quite even now this is just going to take practice but that is the that is the idea of it that you pull it like that they line themselves up just pinch that little bit as it comes over with your thumbnail to hold it in place go underneath those two arms of that hole that you're working into and pass the shuttle back through the loop you've just created and then you can see this knot coming up and because you've got your thumbnail there it should just pull tight at the, exactly the right point as it has this time <laughs> so now I'm going to go into the next available hole which is this one so thread lying lying over the top of my of my stick underneath the stick up through that hole that I'm working into pull it to get get my, my gauge to get to, to, to gauge my hole <laughs> so it's a little bit uneven because my row before was uneven this is just yeah practice is going to definitely hopefully make perfect or near enough perfect for me anyway <laughs> underneath those two arms of that previous hole and back through the loop I've just created pull it tight there's my previous row and here's the two loops I've just showed you there I'll do one more it's it's tricky I don't know if my showing you is going to be any more helpful but although I found quite a lot of tutorials for this um, a lot of them were in other languages than English which is fair enough because that's the countries that obviously do more of this kind of thing still some of them were weren't all that well explained all that well filmed they're a little bit dark and difficult to see I don't know if I'm going to do much better but and also I'm kind of not quite doing it exactly as as they you know it, I, I think probably it's gonna be one of those things that everybody finds their own way like everybody holds their crochet hook a certain way and what have you one thing I did find is it's really helpful every so often to just lift the whole thing up and let it dangle to let this untwist because if you get a twist in the thread it doesn't help matters it's going to get more likely to tangle okay so these should still be I shouldn't have taken them off they should still be on my on my stick thread over the top of the stick under the stick up through the next available hole from the previous row pull it taut to get your get your, your gauge pinch it with your thumbnail go underneath those two arms of the previous row hole <laughs> wiggle the shuttle through it, it will get easier as the shuttle empties I think and then back through the hole I've just created and because I got this double-ended shuttle it should once I get a bit of practice in it should be a fairly smooth movement to pass it through and back again through and back again I haven't got to turn around so I think um, it will get easier as time goes on I'm just going to do one more and try and show you a slightly more smooth version here's the next hole I'm going to work into you can see the ones I've just done this is my next empty hole yarn is going over the stick under the stick up through that hole I've managed to go through more than one there now oh, I was doing so well it is double tricky trying to do it 
um, I'm going to come back to and do that whole scene again. It is double tricky trying to do it so that it, it shows well on camera. I'm making this look more awkward than it is. I think probably what I'm going to end up doing is having it anchored on perhaps my lap tree, lap tree, <laughs> lap tray downstairs in the evenings and um, or out in the garden in the summer. I think that's going to be a more comfortable way to work. Okay, so over the stick, under the stick, up through the the next empty hole. And then I'm just pulling it taut to get that gauge. Pinching that there just to hold it with my with my thumbnail. <laughs> and then I'm going underneath these two arms. I'm sure as with knitting and crochet, this is going to get so much easier once you've got more um, more work done. Um, yeah, so I've gone underneath those two arms and I'm going back through the oh, back through the loop I've just created. I'm going to do one more because that still wasn't very smooth. <laughs> Thread over the stick. Now I'm going under the stick, up through that next hole. And pulling it taut. Holding that with my thumbnail to keep this loop out of the way. And I'm going to go under these these two threads there. So it's the first two you come to. It's actually the two arms of that empty hole. I'm going under them and then back through the loop that I've just created. And carefully pulling the knot up. That's it, so there's one last one to go. I might as well finish this row now. I find these end ones a little bit more tricky. Okay, so if I take that off now so you can see, I'm really happy with that. So what I'm planning to do is, as I say, I need to work on my consistency and I need to make a smaller gauge. I will still find a use for this, though. I'll use it in a slow stitching piece or something. Um, and I'm just going to make fairly small squares or rectangles of it that I can just put onto an embroidery frame. I've got a rectangular embroidery frame I can use and then I can try the embroidery techniques that we saw in Golden Hands. I'm going to start with this one now and just show you how I set that up and started off because that was the trickiest bit definitely. Yeah I mean this this needs work but for my very first attempt ever there aren't there aren't a whole load of failed experiments behind me that you can't see this is the very first attempt that's quite encouraging and I think if I can manage to get that in a finer gauge to embroider on I think that's, that's, that's going to be a really nice little addition, nice little bit of extra texture to my, my slow stitching. Let's put that all to one side for a minute and let's see, I'm hoping it will work with this, I haven't tried this a bit yet so, so I can't be sure. <laughs> and there were lots of um, things about using foundation loops and stuff like that but I'm doing it Sally's way which seemed to me much more simple. Okay, so taking my clip, I'm just going to clip that on there to hold it and give it a, something I can pull on. I'm going to do a little overhand knot, so I'm just making a loop like that. I'm just tying it like that, just making it big enough to fit around my bone folder that I'm going to use as a stick this time. <laughs> as I say, it doesn't, it doesn't matter that this isn't completely accurate at this point. We can get rid of that later. So now I'm going to take my stick out and I'm going to make a, another knot down here. Just turn this one slightly to the right because it will make it easier to pick it up in a minute. Yarn is going over the stick, under the stick and up through that first knotted loop that I made. And then I'm just pulling it, pulling them so that I, I, I get that gauge. 
So basically what's happening is that all those, that is the same length as that, is the same length as that, is the same length as this. It's just making sure that those squares turn out even. I probably should practice for a while with yarn like this to get my, my technique better. So I'm just pinching that there with my thumbnail and now I'm going to go underneath these two here, which are the arms of that previous hole, and over this one. So under there, come up through, and then I'm going to put my yarn back through this loop that I've just made. So with the shuttle I can do that all in one movement because it, it kind of goes in both directions. And then just pull the knot up to where my thumbnail is and take it off my stick. And that's my second hole made. I just turn in that so that it's just to the right. It just makes it easier to pick up in a minute. I don't think it's crucial other than that. Yarn over the stick, under the stick, up through the hole I just made. Pull them to get the gauge, hold it with my thumbnail. I'm going under, oops, I'm going under these two first threads on the, on the stick and then back through this loop. So you don't want the, this loop to be around the stick, you want it to be like that and go back through it. Pull one up to where my thumbnail is, take it off. Turn it again, so that one's there, hang, facing towards my right. Yarn over the stick, under the stick, up through the loop. Pull them so that everything's even. Pinch that with my thumbnail. Go under these first two. Oops, I let go with my thumbnail. <laughs> go under these first two lengths of, of yarn like that and back through the loop that that created. I've let go with my thumbnail. If you think you've messed up, try and avoid pulling the knot tight because if you haven't pulled it tight it's a very simple matter to just loosen the knot up again and um, follow it back through to undo it and just start that, that bit again. Because it's all knotted all the way through, if you did want to cut it between the holes, it's not all going to unravel because it's all knotted. So, so yarn over the stick, under the stick, up through the loop. Tension it to get everything even. Nip that with my thumbnail. And now I'm going underneath these two. and back through that loop that I've created. Still holding this here with my thumbnail. Carefully pull the knot down to, to meet my thumbnail. Take it off, do another one. So the first bit I showed you just now where I was already working on it, I don't have to keep taking it off. Uh, you don't want to keep taking it off until the end of the row. But at this point, we need to keep taking it off because we're, we're creating that first row. Just turn that to the... <laughs> Turn that to the right. The only reason I, th I can see that you turn it to the right is that it's it's easier if it's already there and you can come up through, whereas otherwise I've got to kind of go like this. So if you get into the habit of holding it like this and then turning it to the right before you carry on to the next stitch or next knot, it just makes it easier. Um, and uh, Sally definitely looked like she knew what she was doing, so if that's what she says works, I'm definitely going to give it a try. <laughs> back through here, through the loop, pull the knot up to where my thumbnail was. Didn't do that very well but I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to stop. I'm looking very cumbersome with this still, but believe me, just have a look at, just have a watch of Sally's video and then the um, the other lady whose video I'm going to link, and you'll see it quickly becomes very smooth and easy looking. You can see now I've done in in that kind of first 
row if you like it's kind of made two rows really um, and what you would do now is I did it well that's what I use this big needle for I put another length of the thread I was using through I threaded it all through the top like this and then you can tie another you can tie it onto whatever you're using as your anchor point and I've taken it off now haven't I that was my starting point so I just went through each of the loops like that and then you can kind of gather it gather it all all up that way tight around whatever your anchor point is and then you can just keep turning so that was the end of my row when you come to the end of the row turn and you can keep working left to right again you can also do it left-handed the other way around I even spotted a left-handed um, tutorial now it's just a question of, of practicing it definitely made it easier <laughs> I should have tried it with yarn first to get the hang of it but um but yeah you could make if you did this with uh, a string you could make really useful string bags for putting vegetables in or storing all kinds of things in or fishing with if you even want it <laughs> so um that's all i've got for you today i'm going to go away now and quietly have a go off camera at some finer net and i need you know i need a good amount of it that i can put onto a frame and then try some of those embroidery techniques so hopefully i'll be back in a couple of days to show you the next the next step <laughs> I love doing something I've never tried before especially when it actually works I mean it was you know it was tricky I, I had to keep stopping and starting a video and watching and stuff but you know it's, it's very satisfying when you get the hang of it so um but I need practice okay so I hope you enjoyed that or found it useful are you going to have a go let me know what you think in the comments have you ever tried this do you remember your granny doing it one of the girls that I watched a tutorial said that she learned I don't know if it was from her gran or her great gran she was young enough it could have been her great gran and she was still using her shuttle and stuff which is lovely and that you know that's that's what prompted me to see if i could get hold of a, a vintage kit because i wanted the same equipment <laughs> it is a tool i've got to have it a crafty tool okay uh thank you very much for joining me today and i'll see you again really soon bye